When you think about Louisiana, this probably isn't the sort of landscape you'd think of. But this incredible habitat can be found right here in my home state. Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and today we'll be exploring some of central Louisiana's best national forest, and checking out some of the incredible wildlife that lives here. This habitat's not really what I'm used to, but these rocky hillsides and open savannas definitely have some familiarity to other places we've explored. Oh my goodness! Look at the little speckle king! Hello! What are you doing? Oh wow! What a grumpy little king snake. Excellent little speckled king snake. These guys are snake eaters. They'll be out here eating other snakes, prairie king snakes, horn snakes. Stop trying to bite my face, you. Now we've seen much bigger speckled king snakes than this in the past, but this will be considered a smaller adult. You can find speckled king snakes. Goodness, that was a good try though. Speckled king snakes, you can find them on these little edge habitats pretty easily. You also find them using cover around barns and old places like that and crossing the road in the evening time. Now this one is grumpy, but an absolutely gorgeous snake. You can see some of those little bands on the top. Now they actually separated speckled kings and black king snakes by the Mississippi River, which means all the ones that I've found east of the Mississippi River are black king snakes. Now I don't necessarily agree with that, but out here in the west there'd be no question this is a speckled king snake. One of the major differences is those specks are gonna be much wider. Sometimes out here they'll have a solid belly. This one doesn't have that, got a little bit of black, but absolutely stunning snake, a great addition to the day. Now these are not the only king snake species that you're going to be finding out here. Oh, you stop that. You've also got prairie king snakes out here. I definitely want to find some more longleaf specialist species that require a bit better habitat. Slowinski's corn snakes, maybe even a coach whip or a coral snake. That was the closest you've gotten. I think we're going to go ahead and put this little bitey snake back, but that is awesome. Little addition to the day. Speckled king up in this post oak grove. Back on your little woodland edge. Central Louisiana is an absolute treasure trove filled with incredible wildlife habitat, harboring longleaf savannas, beautiful rivers, and lots of rolling rocky hillsides. And it's in these rocky outcrops that you'll find reptiles. Well, we got some nice little... Oh my goodness, there's a racer runner. Wow. Here we go. That's cool. Six-line racer runner lizard under a rock bit early in the year to be catching one of those. Now this is actually not a skink. It is a lizard. It's actually a whiptail lizard. So they look a lot more like the things out west. Very fancy little guy. These guys are quick. One of the fastest reptiles out here. Ooh. But once again, cooler part of the year. They're not going to be moving fast. Really, really cool lizard species. Only whiptail out here actually. Nice long. You can see why they call them whiptails. Ooh. Big old long whiptail. Mostly, you'd be seeing racers and coach whips out here eating these guys. Not what I was expecting to find under a rock, but very cool species nonetheless. We're going to go ahead and put him back, keep looking for our snakes. That's really cool. Another thing you might notice in these areas is all these burn marks and charred trees. Longleaf pine savannas require frequent fires to stay healthy, so it's quite common to see massive stretches of burned pine forest in this region. And since this section of the forest was recently being burned, I figured that we might see a snake out on the move. Huge snake. Going out of the burned area into the dead stuff. See a rat snake or a massive horn. Here we go. Whoa! He's a lot bigger than I thought. How you doing, bud? Woohoo! Don't bite me. Have a look at that rat snake. Oh my goodness! Chonker! of a Texas rat snake. Ah, he's musking all over me. That's a great snake right there. Look at all those oranges. Woo, he's trying to musk on me. That stinks. That's one of their self-defenses. Well, this would be a, I would say a full-grown Texas rat snake. You can see here it's heading into this dense section, this dense stand of longleaf pine out of this section over here, this burned area. Now, that could just be him moving across the road like he normally does. Or it could be him getting out of the open into something a little bit denser. And you're trying to bite my face. Texas rat snakes are really showy. They open that mouth and they go, ah, I'm gonna get you. But he's not gonna get me. Now, this is probably one of the fattest rat snakes I've ever seen. Probably not the longest, but he's definitely five foot. 
one of the larger rat snakes that I've caught. I couldn't see exactly how big he was at first. I was wondering if this would be a Slowinski's corn snake because we have two different rat snake species out in this habitat. You've got the Slowinski's corn snake, which is kind of classified as a Great Plains rat snake nowadays. And then these guys, the Western or Texas rat snakes, mostly going to be climbing up these trees, eating little squirrels, birds' nests, eating hispid cotton rats all up in this dense grass. So they're a great snake to have. They're one that I am used to seeing back home, but they definitely look a little bit different here. And if you go further north, we actually have a population of black western rat snakes. So they kind of look like the black rat snakes up in Tennessee, but sure enough, they are westerns. We're gonna go ahead and get this guy off the road, keep looking for more, but what a sweet snake. Clearly they're moving today, right? That is a big, big snake. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Go, go, go. This habitat is something else. The animals here are super healthy and diverse. Not to mention, some of the rarest reptiles in my home state can be found here. And some of them can be pretty unassuming. Hey, bud. Oh, oh. Oh. Ah. That's not a five line. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Ow, don't bite. Don't bite. I think this is a coal skink. Well guys, if I'm right, this is a coal skink. They're pretty nondescript. They don't look super fancy. This is at least the second rarest reptile in this whole region. If I don't seem super excited, it's actually because I'm a little bit unsure. Skink species are really hard to identify, especially coal skinks. And it's never one that I've really looked for, so we got a bit lucky. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this is a big adult female coal skink. Now I gotta be careful. Got a little fat tummy there. Most likely grab it, most likely has a couple of eggs. Now the reason that these skinks are so rare is just because their habitat is very specific. If you look behind me, I mean this habitat is absolutely stunning. It's immaculate, it's got rocks everywhere for cover, lots of great grasses for all kinds of rodents and ants to feed on. It's just perfect for the coal skink. And this habitat is getting rarer and rarer in the state. And so is some of the longleaf species, which would include the coal skink. Absolutely phenomenal. Not something I was expecting to find out here, but there you go. It's probably one of the rarest reptiles I've found in my life, which is really weird to say, because we've gotten to see some very rare species. I mean, good grief. This could be the only one that I ever see in my life. Have a look at how fat that tail is. Huge, fat tail. Coal skinks use their tail as kind of a fat storage, as an energy storage, and their tails are much bigger than other skink species. Oh my goodness, now this is a pretty big one. They don't get much bigger than this. Uh, I'm sure you could get some males that get bigger, but as far as a female goes, it's about as big as you're gonna get. It is crazy to think that it could be decades before I see one of these little animals again in my home state. They are just so rare here. That's the beauty of this habitat. It's an incredibly diverse ecosystem, and the scenery is pretty good land yap as well. We were getting pretty tired of flipping rocks, so we decided to call it and head back down to the road. And on our way back, we spotted one of my favorite snakes that lives in these longleaf savannas. Yeah! Have a look at this. That is a nice looking eastern coach. Here we go, guys. This is a big old eastern coach whip. Louisiana eastern coach whip. Very special snake. These guys are longleaf specialists or sandhill specialists, depending on if you're on the coast. They're a very long snake and you can see how their pattern kind of tapers towards the latter half of their body. Now I believe this is a big female. Big old female eastern coach whip and they look a little bit different than the ones that I see a little bit closer to the coast. We get those ones that are half tan, half black. This one has mostly black and then kind of has more of a brownish white mix towards the end. A little bit of tan towards the tail. Now eastern coach whips are very aggressive predators. They're not an aggressive species towards people most of the time as you can see here. Of course it is pretty early in the spring so they're not moving as fast. They're not taking off like you're going to see them doing in the summer and they're not going to be as aggressive. But these are a very food aggressive species. They'll hunt down lizards, other snakes, in fact parts of their range where they live alongside gopher tortoises, they'll even eat baby gopher tortoises, which is absolutely insane. 
super food aggressive species and one of the top reptile predators in habitats like this. Now they're gonna be living in holes and under rocks and under trees a lot of the time. During the day, they're just gonna be coming along here, cruising along logs, cruising along these rocks, cruising virtually anywhere that they can find anything to eat. These guys are up there with pine snakes, king snakes, and all those other really special North American species. A lot of coach whips as you go further west, western coach whip, Baja coach whips, lots of different ones. But in the eastern United States, we really just get the eastern coach whip. Now coach whips are a good sign. Usually means you're gonna have a lot of other reptiles out here. These are one of the longest snakes in the southeast. These guys get seven, seven and a half foot. This one's about four foot here. Definitely not a slouch of a snake. This is an adult coach whip for sure. And when they're babies, they have more of a brownish coloration. Little baby ones are very hard to identify. They've got some strange patterns on them. One of my favorite things about coach whips is their eyes. And they almost seem intelligent. They'll kind of look at you a little bit. Their eyes will move around, and whenever you handle them, they'll look straight at you. you just go, what are you doing? They really assess their situation well. And in some circumstances, coach whips have been known to play dead, which is a very unique behavior from a snake as fast as a coach whip. I would go as far as to say that this is one of the fastest snakes in the southeast. Absolutely stunning snake, one of my favorites. Eastern coach whips, a beautiful, non-venomous colubrid. Very special animal, really glad we're getting to show you guys this animal. If you did enjoy this one, make sure to check out the time we found a coach whip in South Alabama. Really special snake, that one. And we will see you guys next time. All right, see you, little fella. On your way. Boop, boop. Nice snake.